again, you guys, Tanika Maria here, all about emotional wholeness, peace, clarity, and emotional mastery and resiliency for my women leaders, influencers, creators out here that are making things happen. So I am praying that this video, um, that the audio is good. Hi there. If, if you're coming in, can you let me know in the chat if you can hear me? Um, I'm typing, can you hear me? Okay, so I just put a message, read the message and type in the chat and let me know if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me before I continue on this? Uh, Satana uh, Kamini, can you let me know that if you can hear me, please? Can you guys hear me? before I keep going, because my last broadcast, um, I did thank you, because I didn't want to keep talking again and no one could hear me. Thank you so much. I truly, truly, truly appreciate that. Blessings to you. Hey, Brianna. Hey there, sister. Blessings to you all. I'm glad you guys can hear me, because I had a whole broadcast, was getting into it, and no one could hear. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to keep going. So I'm out here today. Thank you for being here. My name is Tanika Maria. I teach on emotional wholeness, peace, and, peace and clarity for my high power women of God. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And on today, every Monday, I try to come out here one, Mondays at one o'clock Eastern time. And today I'll be sharing about five tips to help you heal and feel better now. Five things that I want to share with you on healing and feeling better now. And this is for you if you've been feeling some kind of way, if you've been feeling sort of disconnected, if you're distracting yourself with Netflix and, and eating and scrolling and you are you know you're not quite there. I love you too, lady. You know you're not quite where you should be. And as we're coming to the holiday season, as we're coming through the end of 2021 and we're looking back and looking at stuff and we're like, mm. so hey there, Miss Drake, I'm back. I'm hoping that you can hear me okay now. And now I'm at this place where I just need to feel better now. Before I come into Thanksgiving, before I come into the holiday season, God help me. What can I do to feel better now? Number one, you cannot rush your healing process. And it's so easy to do. We just want to hurry up. God, hurry up and heal me so I can post my cute pictures on Instagram and so I can style and profile and floss and gloss. But you need to take your time and heal right. Number one, <laughs> thank you. Number one, the first thing that you need to do is sit down and have several seats. Sit down, put your phone down, stop scrolling. What does the scripture say? And everything I do, I do it from a faith-based perspective. The scripture says in Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. And see, we don't know how to be sit still. I still struggle with that. You know, this requires intentionality. It requires discipline. But when we get really quiet and when we're not scrolling Instagram, we're not on Facebook, we're not on TikTok, we're not uh, out here on Clubhouse in the Clubhouse streets, when we're really like being intentional to step away, we hear God clearer. I can hear God more clear when I'm being quiet. So let go of the remote control. Put down the iPhone. Put down that Android device. Put down the iPad. Get off your laptop. I'm preaching to myself. Right? Number one, this is how you're going to heal and feel better fast. This goes directly against your ego. Goes directly against your flesh because we're itching. You know, we want to do something. We just got to be doing something, right? Number one, if you want to feel better and stop feeling all disconnected and struggling and janky and just not feeling right, get still. Number two, number two, ask God to help you discern the source of that sad feeling. Like when I have a sad feeling, it's usually right in my chest, like right in my heart, right? And sometimes we have these sad feelings and we don't know what the origin is. So most of the time we do, but a lot of times we have a sad feeling. Hey there, Chatney. We have a sad feeling in our chest and we don't know the source of it. We, we can't put our finger on it. So once you sat still, once you put your iPhone down and your Android down and you've stopped scrolling and you're not looking at everybody's lives and YouTube videos, you're not on TV, now that you're still, now that you need to ask God to help you discern 
What is the source of that sad feeling? What is the source of what's going on in your heart? The scripture for this is James 1, 5. He says, ask him, ask him for wisdom. He won't, he won't rebuke you for asking. You, he's not going to beat you over the head because you're asking. Ask God, God, what is going on in my heart, right? Why am I feeling sad in my chest? Where is this coming from, right? So number one, sit down, put your phone down. Number two, ask God to determine the source of the sad feeling in your chest. And sometimes, again, you know why. Sometimes you're not able to put your finger on it. In some situations, it could be a mix of a whole lot of stuff that's happened to you, a lot of subconscious stuff, a lot of stuff just floating around. And we have this low-grade, anxious, sad feeling, and we can't pinpoint one big, giant thing. It may not be one thing. It may not be one big thing. It may be a whole bunch of little stuff that just kind of piled up on you, and now you're feeling sad, and you don't know why. Now you're feeling down, and you can't put your finger on it. So number two, ask God to help you determine, determine and discern the source of that sadness. Also, another thing is you could, if you're an intercessor, if you're an empath, we call them intercessors. I'm from the faith-based. Christian perspective, an empath to me is like an intercessor. You pick up on stuff from other people. You might be picking up sad feelings from somebody else. You may be so sensitive spiritually that you're picking up on a whole bunch of stuff that's not even you. This is why you need to ask. So number two, ask God where this sad stuff is coming from. Okay. All right. Number three, receive the answer. You got to sit still long enough with yourself, with yourself and with God to like get the answer of it, right? So you receive the answer. So you put your cell phone down, you be still, you stop scrolling, stop eating, stop getting on Netflix, stop messing with your laptop and your iPad. Then you ask God the source of the feeling. Number two, number three, receive that answer. The scripture says in Matthew 7, 8, for everyone who receives, asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and he who knocks in the door will be open. And so the interesting thing is, God bless you. I'm glad this is helping somebody. Thank you for putting that. Share this out. All right. And so when God gives you that answer, it may surprise you. If you're sitting still, you, you, you may realize that the sad feeling in your chest may be unresolved grief. You may still have some grief about a loved one. You may have unresolved grief about a job loss, a relationship breakup, a fallout you had. We Anytime you lose something, anytime there's a breakup or a loss, you're going to grieve it. There's grief attached. When you, you've been on a job for 20 years and you get fired, you lose a loved one, naturally you're going to have a grief. When you go through a divorce, grief. You break up and fall out with a friend, grief. Something goes down with one of your children and it doesn't, grief. You may have unresolved grief. You may just have a lot of, you may be feeling alone and lonely. You may be feeling misunderstood or rejected by certain people. You could have worry and anxiety about a whole bunch of stuff. You may find that the source of that sad feeling in your chest is coming from dashed hopes and disappointments. Sometimes we're disappointed and sometimes we're angry and we, and so we're, we're, we've, we've been stuffing it under and we haven't fully dealt with it. And we're sort of low-key mad and we're kind of low-key feeling some kind of way and we're low-key disappointed and we're still fronting about it and we're still faking and fronting and flossing and whatnot and we're mad and we're sad about it. And so when you sit still and ask God, you may find out, God, I'm, I'm mad at you. God, I'm bent. God, this is jacked. God, my, I, my feelings were hurt about that. That meant, God, I really do feel something. This is why, what I've been carrying in my heart. This is what's going on. Amen. Blessings to you, Melodies, if I'm saying that correctly. And so it could be anything. It could be a financial struggle. It could be dashed hope and hopes and dreams. It could be rejection. It could be the stuff going on in our country and in the world at large. It's a lot out here in the world that's going on that's really, really sad. You may be feeling some of that. So number one, so we're talking about the five tips on how to heal and feel better now. So number one, we said, sit down, put your phone down, get off your iPad, get off your Android device, get off your iPad, uh, get off your laptop, stop getting, being on Netflix, stop watching lives, YouTubes, videos, TikToks. Sit still, 
right? Number two, we said, ask God to help you determine the source of the sadness in your chest. Number three, receive the answer. It may surprise you. Number four, here's a big one. Number four, cry. Cry if you feel like it. If you need to cry some more, get in the shower and cry some more. This works. Let me say it again. Number four is to cry. Yes, cry. Get in the shower and cry. Have you a big ugly cry, right? You can get a good cry in and see we, we go back and as you look throughout the scriptures, Jesus wept, King Hezekiah wept, Job wept, Mordecai wept, Jeremiah wept, King David wept. All of these men cried. There's more men crying than women crying in the scripture. And they wept openly. They wept publicly. And they were dramatic with their tears. They didn't even hide it, right? And see, all of these powerful prophets and men of God and kings in the Bible, they had absolutely no problem crying. They had no problem being public and weeping. You go look at the scriptures. These men did big, bad boos publicly. And now us women, we're so hard sometimes that we don't even give. You are worthy of your tears. You are worthy of every tear you shed. And thank God he created us with the capacity to cry. Psychology Today, today let me read this quote from Psychology Today. It says, it is good to cry. It is healthy to cry. This helps us emotionally clear stress and sadness. Crying is essential to resolve grief. And when the waves of tears come over us after we experience a loss, it helps us to process that loss and keep living with open hearts. This is where I'm getting to. This is where I'm getting to. Tears help purify the negativity out of you. When you're crying, when God, when you have identified the source of what's making you feel sad and, and whatnot in some kind of way, and you begin to release with tears, it purifies it out of you. And this is the part that's, that's a struggle. If we don't do this, our hearts get hard. The, 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 if you're not releasing this stuff out of you, your heart begins to get hardened. It begins to get calloused. It begins to be less compassionate. So if there are folks out here that are literally constipated on their tears, their hearts have been hardened, they, they, they become callous and less compassionate because they haven't given themselves the release to release that negativity, to release the impurity, to release that stress, to release that sadness. And so, and there are so many people that really can't cry because they've become so disconnected. Don't let that be you, beloved. So number four, shed those tears, cry, get in the shower, cry, do what you need to do, but release it out of you so that your heart stays open. This is so important because if I don't release my tears, my heart begins to close. So we want to cry and release this stuff out of us. And number five, and this is the last one, get you a journal and write, write out some questions to yourself and to God about the situation. And, 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 and write down the answers as they come. So write down some questions and here are some ideal questions that you can ask yourself about that situation that's causing you to be sad, that's causing you to feel up and down in some kind of way and mad and sad and whatever. Ask yourself, Lord, how do you see this situation? Lord, how do you see this situation? Here's another question you can ask yourself. This requires you to be neutral and say, how would someone from the outside looking in see my situation? How would someone from the outside looking in see this? And this one is challenging because then this will show you where you may have been wrong. It may show you where you are out of order and you may find that, okay, I've been bent.